Okay, so this recording will be available um, on the Penn Show's website or the YouTube channel in early July. So for anybody who is uncomfortable with their uh, video or audio being recorded, uh, you know, you can keep your video off and use chat to ask questions. Um, but uh, yeah, I guess we're good to go. Emma, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, really excited for this workshop and I will turn it over to you. Of course. Thank you so much for having me. Um, welcome, everybody. Uh, thank you so much for coming out today. It's truly a pleasure to come back uh, after year after year to teach um, or not teach, but talk to you guys about bullet journaling, because it's definitely something that I have a passion for. And I've been doing it for about four years now. Now, um, So let's just go ahead and dive right in. Uh, so me, here we go. So just a little bit about me before we start, um, just so you can get to know me while we're here. Uh, I have been bullet journaling for about four years now, on and off, um, mostly on. I've taken a couple breaks, and I'll talk more about that later on, uh, why that happened. Um, my father, Jim Hines, is the founder and owner of Hines Pen Co., and he is actually participating in the pen show this year, as well as his girlfriend, Elise Longazelle, who is teaching a resin pouring class later, I think at the end of June, correct? Yes, it should be the Friday, the 25th. Okay, cool. Um, and then we're located out of Dallas, Texas, and this is my third year teaching this seminar. So it's always, it's always a pleasure to come back. Um, so what is bullet journaling? So bullet journaling is, uh, it's a lot of different things, but at its core, it's the art of organizing your life. Um, it's, it's also a record of your day-to-day -day life and it can be a journal, it can be a tracker. Um, the one thing that I do want to emphasize is that it doesn't have to be super fancy or elaborate, like a lot of aesthetically pleasing pages or things that you'll see on the internet. Um, it can be very minimalistic or it can be artsy, um, whatever's going to help you stay organized um, and enjoy your time. So when I first started bullet journaling, uh, I thought I had to make it really artsy and aesthetically pleasing. And it ended up taking a lot of my time at night, which is typically when I would actually go ahead and fill out my bullet journal. Um, and it, <laughs> it really burned me out within the first few months of me doing it because I spent so much time you know, thinking about themes and uh, doing all this like fun art stuff. And it just, it burned me out completely. So that's one of the biggest things I want to emphasize when it comes to bullet journaling is that at its core, um, it's able to be molded to whatever you need it to do. Um, so yeah. And uh, who came up with bullet journaling? So the original bullet journal method was created by a New York designer by the name of Ryder Carroll. And his original method was very minimalistic, but practical and useful. And that's kind of what we're gonna go over today is his original method. Um, he also has a YouTube video going over this method that he created as well. He has um, an old one and then an updated one that you can actually go back and look at. Uh, and before we dive into actual the actual um, method of the bullet journal, I do want to talk about some uh, uh, terms that you'll hear me repeat. Uh, <laughs> so here's a, um, here's some elements of bullet journaling to get familiar with: uh, a spread, which is a group of pages about all about one topic. It's typically two pages. Like when you open the book flat, it's those two pages. That's what a spread is typically. Um, it can be more than that. Um, you can have multiple spreads and it can just be about the same thing, but that's typically what we talk about when we talk about a spread. Um, a future log is a spread that covers important information briefly, and it can be either for a six month period or a 12 month period. Typically it's a six month period because you know you only have so much space on a two spread page. <laughs> so um, uh, basically, it's uh, going to be a overview of, um, sorry, my head, 
I just blanked for a minute. It's going to be an overview of the next six months, six to 12 months um, of important things that are like super far out that you could possibly forget. But, you know, it's it's to help you stay organized for like a longer period of time than just like init the initial like month that you're in. Um, and then the monthly spread is similar to a future log, but rather it covers just one month. And then um, a tracker, a tracker is something that is um, set up in a bullet journal designed to track a specific habit or activity that you do daily. And typically it's on a month to month basis. Uh, so yeah. And then the first few pages. So this is where we're gonna start talking about um, the actual, what goes into the bullet journal. Um, so your first few pages typically uh, are gonna be your index and your index is going to be your guide to your journal. Especially if you use a journal like a Loistrom, um, they have numbered pages. So it's very easy to go ahead and look at the number of the page that you're on and write it down in your index. And um, having an index will make it uh, will make looking for specific spreads easier down the line because your journal will grow very quickly. <laughs> it will grow quicker than you think. Um, and there's a lot of different journals out there that you can use, but some of my favorites are the Moleskin and the Loistrom. I'm more uh, privy to the Loistrom just because it has the numbered pages and it already has an index actually like put in the book for you. So it's a really nice option for a bullet journal and they have different ones. They have lined journals, they have dotted journals and they have blank journals. So there's a lot of different options that you could use for a bullet journal um, or you can just use a notebook. Like it doesn't have to be super, you know, uh, expensive or super nice. It can just be a lined notebook, if anything. This is something that you're using to organize your life and it doesn't have to be elaborate, if that makes sense. Um, so after your index, this is an example of what a Loistrom index looks like. Um, you know, you'll have the pages, it's already set up in like a box for you. Um, so it's actually really nice, but like I said, you don't need a Loistrom. <laughs> so after the index, you're gonna actually come to your future log. So like, uh, like I was saying earlier, the future log will typically be about six months and you'll kind of, um, but it can be stretched, stretched to 12. And this is kind of an example of a future log. So you have like your month and then to the side of it, you'd write all the important dates for that month that you have planned out ahead of time. Um, and it doesn't have to look like that. It can just be like, you know, just write January and then write all the dates that you have and then February and then all the dates that you have and stuff like that. You don't have to do it like the actual calendar next to it, but if you want to, you can. Um, and then after the future log is gonna be your monthly spread. So the monthly spread is, um, well, actually before I start that, uh, after your future log, if you choose to, you can add some fun spreads that we'll talk about a little later on. Um, I include them in the end because I don't think they're necessary to the core of bullet journaling. Um, sometimes when you add too many spreads in, it can get overwhelming uh, trying to keep up with all of them. And what starts out as a 30 minute journaling session every night can turn into a couple of hours. And trust me, I've been there and I've done that. <laughs> um, if you choose not to add anything like that, the next spread that you're gonna actually go ahead and do is your monthly spread, which keeps track of closer upcoming events in whatever month you're currently in. And it gives you a basic overview of the month and it, what it entails for you. And it will help you when you come back throughout the month and look at the actual spread, um, it'll be like, oh, okay, so that's what I'm doing you know, next week or something like that. It helps you stay organized for that month. And this is an example of what a monthly spread could look like. This is what I, the one on the left is typically what I would do before when I was doing like a super artsy one, but making it so even and so, and, you know, physically drawing out all the boxes would take me so long that I just started doing what was on the right. Um, 
So it, it's, it's really up to you and what you want to do and what will take you less time, if anything. Or if you have more time, you know, you can do something elaborate like that. Um, so following the monthly spread, you have your weekly spreads. Um, with the monthly spread, it's more designed for things like birthdays, appointments, events, stuff like that. The weekly spread is actually a more in-depth uh, guide for specific days of the month. So some things that I've done personally, I've done uh, scheduling like meal prep days, cleaning days, um, and keeping track of my work schedule. Since I don't work a typical nine to five, I have a different kind of work schedule. Um, and you'll typically be visiting your weekly spreads at least once a day to know what's going on. So these are real, this is really the meat and bones of a bullet journal. Um, and this is kind of, these are some examples of what a weekly spread can look like. You know, you have everything kind of listed out and you have little boxes and stuff to like check off like activities and tasks and stuff like that. And then you have this one over here where it's like the week is on the side where you have everything listed of like what's going on and then tasks on the side. And then even a little tracker down here to track uh, specific habits. and then it repeats. Um, so that's the basic idea of what a bullet journal does is once the month is over, you move on to the next one and you repeat the monthly and weekly spreads and um, it continues from there. And it's, it's a very useful and helpful tool to help you stay organized. You know, if you tend to forget things like I do, I'm very forgetful, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, and some additional spread ideas that I did want to talk about. Um, while these are great to have, I want to caution that some of them are more, some of the more fun based spreads um, can build on each other and potentially cause you to become overwhelmed. Um, but it's completely up to you. Like it's your journal, your way of organizing your life. If additional spreads such as the mood trackers, travel trackers, Medication trackers is actually something really interesting. My dad's uh, business partner has epilepsy and he actually uh, uses his bullet journal to track when he takes his medication so he doesn't have any uh, incidents. And I thought that was really interesting. So, you know, if you take medication, you can track the days that you take it in, um, you know, in order to make sure everything goes smoothly. Um, but there's also things like water logs to track how much water you intake because I don't, <laughs> I'm really bad about drinking water, which is unfortunate. Um, you know, there's movie trackers, which I've used before where I track like what movies I go to see during the month or during the year, if anything. It's typically something that I'll put after the future spread. Um, I'll track like what movies I go out to see at the movie theater. Um, and then you can do grocery lists, you can do song playlists, you know, there's, there's tons of ideas out there um, for different uh, spreads that you can use. Um, but that was the beginner's introduction to bullet journaling. I am open to questions from anybody. If you want to either raise your hand and unmute or type them in the chat, feel free to. I'll start you off with one. Mm -hmm. Every year I have these great ambitions about setting up a bullet journal. I'll start in the middle of November. I'll fill out my book. I'll put all my trackers in. I'll get everything there. January 1st rolls around. I crack open the book. I start filling it in. By January 4th, I'm done. I keep putting it off. I never fill it out anymore. And do you have, I don't know what happens if I just burn out before I even start or whatever, I get kind of discouraged. What, what pointers do you have for, I guess, staying with it and, and building the habit of going in there every mm -hmm. day to do it? Definitely. Um, I think you mentioned that you, you know, you put trackers and stuff in there. I think at its core, when you're first starting out, it's best to do, to be very minimalistic about it. Cause then you can build the habit and actually get, into um, a routine with the bullet journal. Cause if you have all these trackers, then, you know, you, you, you start really good. You start being like, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to draw all these trackers out in my journal and I'm going to fill them out throughout the month. But then as you go on through the months, you start seeing drawing the trackers in and, and other things like that as like a hassle, you know? 
So I think starting out very minimalistically, like just tracking or not even tracking, but keeping track of, uh, I just said track again, but just using the weekly and the monthly spread in the beginning to help build the habit. And then you can get more elaborate as you go on. Of course. Thanks. What questions does everybody have? You can feel free to come off of mute or you can type it in chat. You totally can, uh, Teresa. So um, this was just the writer Carol method that I wanted to go over, which was bullet journaling in its essence. Um, you can just jump into it and do it on a daily day-to-day ba -day basis. But I think having a weekly spread to do that would actually help you be a little bit more organized, but, um, that's just personal preference, but you can definitely just go out, get a notebook and keep track of what's going on to a day-to-day -day basis, just to keep a record of what you did. Yeah. If you make a really big mistake, do you tear out pages and glue or glue, to, glue them together? I do both. <laughs> um, I actually tend to tear out my pages. And so actually with a the Loistrum, they have some serrated pages in the back that are um, really easy to tear out and then glue in to a different page if you have a mistake. <laughs> so um, I typically just tear them out uh, I've been known to glue them together too. So it's really just whatever you want to do. Um, how do the markers work as far as tasks are supposed to, are supposed to move to next week, etc. cetera. Um, so as far as markers, um, you typically want to have like a, like a system of markers in your bullet journal. So whatever, you know, if it's a box to check off, uh, tasks, or if it's like a little dot to re or like a bullet point to represent an event or something like that. Um, and then typically, like if you want to move something to the next week, you could always draw a line through it and then put an arrow at the end of it and just say, you know, it's uh, being moved. And then you can rewrite it in the next week or the next month or whatever it is. Um, but you typically want to have a legend of a little, what's the word I'm looking for? little identifiers in your bullet journal. If you're going to do a movie or reading tracker, uh, do you dedicate spread pages to them and then track them there? Or do you track them weekly in the weekly spread and then transfer them to the specialized spread? Um, whatever you want to do, honestly. So when I did the movie spread or the reading or a reading tracker, reading tracker is a really good one too. Um, I dedicate, I dedicated spreads to them and I just put like the date that I saw them or the date that I read the book next to the movie. And then I wrote like what kind of stars I would give it. Um, so like, for instance, I went and saw Avengers Endgame a couple years ago. So I'd write the date that I went to see it and then how many stars I would give the movie and then, you know, move on from there. But I'd also put that I went to see the movie in my weekly spread. So it's whatever you prefer to do with that. Emma, do you usually set up uh, a bullet journal to last you uh, like a 12 month year or do you just like go continuously until you fill up the book and then start a new book? Um, what I typically do is um, every month I'll go ahead and set up that month. Um, I'll have a dedicated day where I sit down for like an hour or two and I'll just, you know, fill up the pages for that specific month. And then I'll go through and add my appointments and stuff like that and whatever I have to do for that month and have it there for me so I can just go back in every day and fill out what I did and what I didn't do and stuff like that. So if you do have the time, um, you know, that's definitely one way that you can do it. Another way is to just fill it out as you go. 
that's another way to do it. Or like you said, you know, sit down one day for like more than two hours and just fill out a couple months. <laughs> right. Well, I was thinking more like, you know, filling up the book. If you get to the end of the year and you've got 50 pages left in the book, do you seal up the book and put it away and start a new one in January? Or do you just keep filling it up until you run out of space and then start a new book? Um, personally, I think just because I like the idea of a new book, I would start it, um, just a new one in January, but you can definitely use up the last 50 pages. I've done both, to be honest with you. I've started, um, I've started January in the last like couple hundred pages of my book. And then, you know, once it gets to the middle of the year, started a new one. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, it's, I, I, I like the idea of like starting over on a new book fresh in January, because typically um, if you go pretty ham with some of the specialized spreads, you'll fill up a Loistrum in about six months. Um, you know, sometimes it can be pushed to eight. So it really just depends on how minimalistic you go or how specialized you go. Cool, thanks. Of course. And how do you keep from getting discouraged? You know, if you go to Instagram or Pinterest and you're looking for ideas and you see these beautiful artistic spreads, you know, people do all kinds of elaborate stuff and I compare it to my own chicken scratch and it's like, you know, you get kind of get the feeling like, why do I even bother? I can't do that. And, you know, how do you, how do you fight that and just uh, keep moving forward? Mm -hmm. That's a good question. I think in the end, it really comes down to remembering that this book is not or this bullet journal is not, you know, it's not a job like some people have a job on YouTube for, you know what I mean? Like they'll go on YouTube, they'll post like uh, time lapses of them filling out their bullet journal, like super uh, artsy and fartsy and stuff like that. But it's not, it's not a job for you. It's more just something to help you in your day-to-day -day life. And since it's something to help you, it doesn't have to be like that. Gotcha. And Victor says, don't look at the arty ones. <laughs> yes, that is also one true. When you're looking at ideas on, you know, Pinterest or anything, just search minimalistic and you'll feel much better about yourself. <laughs> yeah, people do some crazy stuff. Yeah, there, there have definitely been some gorgeous ones that I've seen that I wish I could replicate. But, you know, I just sometimes, sometimes even just putting some washi tape in your a uh, bullet journal can make it feel a little bit more fun. So it doesn't have to be super elaborate. But does anybody else have any questions? No questions, it's a quiet group tonight. Who do I go to for inspiration? Um, I go to YouTube. <laughs> Um, I go to YouTube and Pinterest mostly. Um, there's a couple uh, that I can name off the top of my head that are actually pretty artsy though, unfortunately, just because I like looking at the aesthetically pleasing spreads. It's a guilty pleasure of mine. <laughs> um, I definitely enjoy watching Amanda Rachel Lee. She's a really good bullet journaler on YouTube. Um, I go to uh, Boho Berry. She's also a really nice one. She's She's kind of artistic and kind of not. She just does a lot of different spreads. Um, and those are the only two that I can think of off the, top, off the top of my head. But then Pinterest, Pinterest is a huge thing that I go to. Like back when I used to do themes for my bullet journal, I would actually go and look at like monthly theme ideas and then kind of do my own spin on what I'd see. So there's a lot of inspiration out there. There's a lot of different things that you can go and look at. Yeah, of course. Um, let me go ahead and do that for you. Yes, that is true. And Boho, Harry. there you go. Of course. 
And then, you know, going from Amanda Rachel Lee's channel, she also has uh, people that she recommends on her actual channel. So you can go ahead and fall down that uh, bullet journaling rabbit hole and find a bunch of different people that I can't seem to remember right now. <laughs> Um, you had mentioned a legend in regarding to some highlighters, I believe. Uh, what are some examples of, a, of what the legend includes? Is this what you use to carry over unfinished tasks and ongoing projects? Um, so yes, uh, an, an example of what a legend would include, let me see if I can't pull something up. I probably should have put something in my presentation about it, but that's the one thing that did escape my mind. Um, so uh with a legend it's basically kind of think about like a key like you know how some maps have like little symbols and keys of like what things are um you want to have a like a key of little symbols that you use throughout your bullet journal uh so let me pull up this it kind of like a legend you'd find on a map yeah kind of like that um, pictures. and then we'll go here. Okay, so let me switch over my screen really quick to just this or this. So this is kind of what I'm talking about. Let me uh, bump it up a little bit. So this is kind of an example of a key. It doesn't have to be these specific symbols. Like it can be, you know, totally different than that. Um, where did my chat go? Hello? <laughs> you might have to open it again. Mine disappeared too. Okay. Uh, chat. Okay, there we go. Um, so this is an example of a key. So you have like a box for your tasks. You have a box with a arrow going through it to say that you've like migrated the task to a different week. Um, you know, you have a check mark for a completed task. You have an a X for a canceled task. You have triangles for appointments and then bullet points for notes and other things like that. Um, so this is something that you want to actually have like throughout the bullet journal consistently. Um, and that is what I use to carry over unfinished tasks and ongoing projects. Uh, so Ryder Carroll bullet journal also provides good info and links to other bullet journalers. Yes, that is true. I believe, uh, I think he has a website actually about it, if I remember correctly, he, on top of the YouTube video. So yeah, of course, Brad, no problem. <laughs> oh, I can just, that's nice. I can just switch to, I don't have to cancel it. <laughs> Mary put uh, a link in chat for, that's probably a uh, writer's website. Yes, thank you, Mary. I appreciate it. All right, any other questions? Of course, thank you so much for coming out and listening to me ramble about bullet journaling. <laughs> I really appreciate it. <laughs> I hope I hope it was uh, at least a little informative. Yeah, well, thank you very much, Emma. We appreciate your time and uh, thank you for coming and supporting the St. Louis Pen Show and being a part of our uh, wild virtual experiment that we're trying. Of course, anytime. Cool. All right, and thank you everybody for coming. This wraps up weekend one. We will be back uh, Friday, the, what's that, the 18th, I believe at 7 p.m. Central. It might be six, so uh, check the schedule on the, on the website, but uh, We'll be back with Gina Salarino, who's going to be talking about nib grinds and her journaler nib and 
uh, fun stuff like that. So thank you all very much and enjoy the enjoy your week. Thank you so much for coming, guys. Enjoy your uh, the rest of your week.